That's if you just had elections, parliamentary elections. We know that uh, Mr. Babish uh, will probably be the next Prime Minister of the Czech Republic. But what will happen in the coming weeks and what will be the shape of the next Czech government in your view? Uh, the result of the elections is not surprising, but what is surprising that nine parties made it to the parliament, which makes for Mr. Babish much more difficult to form a coalition because all of these parties basically based their campaign against, or most of them, against these policies from the last four years. So despite the fact that he has 78 out of 200 uh, MPs, he still needs at least he still need at least 23 to have a majority. And uh, the second biggest party, which uh, in the, uh, when we see his pro the program of the two parties is relatively similar, it's the Conservative Party, ODS, is not willing to go to the coalition, which would make sense from policy perspective, but doesn't make sense from the perspective of uh, how the ODS gets this result, they get this result because they highly criticized Babish in the last four years. So the, the most likely situation for next few weeks uh, and, uh, is that Babish will somehow form a minority government, maybe pick two, three, five MPs uh, from other parties, maybe nominate some, uh, some uh, renowned uh, personalities from different ministries, and uh, will form the government, but we have to bear in mind that we are two months before the presidential elections, which also plays a role in this process, because president appoints prime minister, and if Babish would fail in the first round, then president appoints a second possible, he has a second, second round, and he might appoint the same person, but, but also a different person. So they, the both men and Babish needs president now, but president, Zeman, who is run for the second mandate, needs Babish, because we need the support of his voters. So, well, clearly a lot of uncertainty. Now, one thing we do know about Mr. Babish is his track record when he was the finance minister of, of, of Czechia uh, in the previous government. But what do we know about his policies and what, what changes does he particularly want to implement in internal politics in the Czech Republic going forward? He has some quite ambitious program in terms of economic reform, um, bureaucratic uh, the red tape and uh, make the state more efficient. Uh, and uh, all these policies, uh, and he, he's, not, he's not a man of compromise, he cannot simply uh, leave part of the, of, of the reward to others. So uh, I think this, uh, my, his main priorities is not so much focused on foreign policy or European policy, he even he insists on also for his MPs and ministers to stay at home, to focus on domestic policy. And uh, it will pretty much depend what the potential coalition partner will allow him to do. Uh, the second and third uh, party are not uh, are, are not willing to support uh, uh, his uh, his policies in, in 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 terms of regulating the market uh, because he is quite vocal on on tax evasions uh, on, on on a national level. So we can we can expect basically what, not, not much uh, change what uh, in, in terms of economic policy. Also, the economy is growing, so not no government wants to change much thing because it works. And uh, in last uh, three four years, uh, he, he he managed to reduce the, the deficit of, of uh, public finances. And I think he the objective is to get to closer to zero if the economic uh, growth will continue. Well, although you say he's disinterested in foreign policy, a lot of people are thinking that his election does change the dynamics within the Visegrad group uh, following, uh, uh, after following on from Prime Minister Sobotka, but also in the context of uh, Sebastian Kurz's victory in, in Austria. This potentially could lead to a realignment of regional relationships, but also in terms of the Czech Republic's position vis-a-vis -vis Brussels. Do you see any impact in those areas at all? I don't see much impact. On one side, Babish was, is, is not very interested in foreign policy. On the other side, he is pragmatic and he speaks languages, which is not the case of our uh, pre previous or current prime minister and, uh, and other politicians. He speaks very good French and German and English. So uh, he is, when he has a priority on a European level, he's, he's able to, to find an ad hoc coalition like he, dealt with, uh, he, like he did in recent years on VAT reform with German minister Schäuble. Uh, so, there is, uh, so there is a way to, to, to push concrete policies within Visegrad or outside Visegrad. He's very pragmatic in who, the, who, with whom the coalition will be formed. But I would not expect any 
uh, deeper change of the Visegrad, of the dynamics of Visegrad. And uh, when it comes to Austria, uh, I don't think Babich has a clear idea what, what should be the, the common policy. We, are, we have two years, like the whole European Union will have two years to reflect about the future uh, settlement of the European Union. Uh, I don't think the Czech Republic has ambition to, to, to bring some ideas how the ch future uh, European Union should look like. But definitely, uh, is 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 high is, is highly likely that they would not the, the future government would not support uh, entry to the eurozone. That's quite clear because all major parties uh, are not supporting that. And uh, when 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 talking about the core of the future European Union, uh, the major parties are rather uh, reluctant to join the core. Uh, and this is similar with Polish and and, and Hungarian government. So there's still some question marks. We have the presidential elections in January. What that means, we should still keep looking at the Czech Republic and seeing what happens. Definitely. So thank you very much, Vasta, for coming, and thank you for your thoughts. Thank you.